Alright, so you can see a wet cell can be very advanced, highly advanced technology and a huge part of the future of HHO gas. It's not all about the dry cell. You know, a wet cell reactor has many advantages over a dry cell. It's the only way you guys are going to get your ass to Mars. Okay? The wet cell is going to play a huge part in that. So I'm just going to go over some of my advanced technology that we've covered in my laboratory here lately. Just some of the stuff that I've been working on. And hopefully some of you other electrical engineers out there are working on. So I just wanted to show you real quick how you can change waveforms. This is the AC line circuit in the house, so be careful. I just wanted to show you how this works. A full bridge rectifier, you know, will turn sine wave directly into a square wave. And square wave is what we use to split the water. Okay? AC is really good for traveling long distances with electricity. That's how the power lines work. They have high voltage, they bring it all the way down the line to you so there's no resistance, and then they drop the load with the transformer, they lower they break it down to 120 volts sine wave and as it comes in the circuit here I've used the full bridge rectifier and normally you want to have one of these on a heat sink with a fan and whatnot I don't have this one set up but I just want to show you when I turn this on right here you're gonna see it turns it into a DC square wave I'm reading it in the square wave part of my DC circuit on my voltage meter and don't forget these symbols you're gonna see these symbols even the on and off button that's on here, the diode, the ohm symbol, is very important to their technology. Everything was powered by reactors. You know, they have a hydrogen fuel cell in space, and then all you need is a solar panel, and you can power it with a laser from Earth and start charging up. Charge up the ship. That's the power of hydrogen. You have the power of the sun, the power of stars. So let me show you this right here. See, I've got 25 tablespoons of my sodium carbonate electrolyte. Okay, so I've got that in here in my reactor, and I'm going to show you how what size flame that produces with just one reactor core. So I just have this one reactor, the other one's sitting off to the side there. I usually have two of them hooked together, three, four, depending on what size of flame I want to make. If I want to cook, weld, drive, or fly, it all determines on the electricity you have. So it's, it has to come from somewhere. The electricity has to come from somewhere. Right now I'm plugged into the wall circuit. So I'm going to turn this thing on. I'm going to show you what size flame that produces. So see if you look at my kilowatt here. I'm only pulling two and a half amps. And I'm at 300 watts. Okay. And that's slowly going to climb because I don't have a pulse width modulator connected to this thing. So if you don't have a PWM, it's a runaway process. That's going to slowly climb. Every few seconds, it's going to jump. See? And it's just going to continue doing that until I turn it off or it overheats or the power supply shuts down. And that's how it works without a PWM. I'll show you what kind of flame I'm getting out of there. See, and I've adjusted the reactor. Once you get an adjustment like this, and I have my lights set on there, you don't have to do it again. Once your electrolyte's set, you're good to go. You're good to go.
This is about where I like to start because when I stop, it's gonna be at about 500 watts. So I'm gonna run this thing for about half an hour. So I hope that helps you understand the run times. So just to produce a little flame like that, 300 watts on one fuel cell. And normally I'll take these things up to about six, seven, 800 watts and make that flame a lot larger, but then it cuts down my run time. So you end up using more fuel cells. That's what an array is for. You need an array. You need quite a few of these hooked together. And you can do just about anything you wanted. Just give you an idea of the size of the flame. That little flame's a hell of a lot hotter than you think it is. Reaches way up here. Watch, I'll show you. See? So let's take a look here. If you look at my pulsar reactor, you clearly see that you can take a crystal ball and amplify that light for your solar panels. So once you have one pulsar reactor going, you can add many different optics around this light and then you add your solar panel and you can increase the intensity of the electricity that's created. That's the inverse square law. The closer you get to this thing the more powerful it is. The closer you get to that light the more intense the electricity is on your solar panel the more light hits your panel. So I've learned putting these crystal balls up close increases the power immensely immensely you have to be careful putting a crystal ball up there you can blind yourself this thing's already bright enough you can't look at it without welders goggles on and even that hardly helps you against this intense intense bright light Yeah, normally I just use one switch to activate everything and I have things hooked up to my main laboratory computer here. I use another computer and I have a program called Gold Wave. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but that's where I'm getting all my reactor sounds. I can program just about anything I want into there. I'm going to show you how I use LCARS. This is a free program, LCARS 47. It builds you kind of a Reactor control system stands for Library Computer Access Retrieval System. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Star Trek, but this is all free and you can download this. And once you get good at it, and if you're any good with Bluetooth or anything like that, you can hook your reactors up to a voice command or you can hook them up like me to the switches when you have switches and things like that. So you can build you a warp core control, build a diagnostic systems for your reactor. Pretty cool stuff. Might want to check that out. So when you go to start one of these suckers up, the way it works is it's one switch technology. So you don't have anything happening right now, everything's off, it's just water sitting here. But as soon as you hit the electrical current and you start the electrolysis process, everything starts going. It's one switch technology. One switch operation. 
Take a look inside here. I'm going to show you some pictures. Let's take a look in here. I'm going to show you guys what I've been working on in my laboratory. I've been working with ice crystals as solid fuel sources. So I thought that would be a great idea. You guys know I've been playing with a lot of light. You've seen my pulsar reactor. So I'm burning water and recapturing it. Let's take a look in here. So now that you're able to tap into this tremendous amount of energy in the form of the water molecule, you can easily, easily build a wet cell reactor and tap into that power. You can build your hydrogen society. So you can get underwater, in space, it's going to work out really well. A hydrogen civilization, and you're going to travel amongst the stars, and you're going to start searching for water in other galaxies. That would be the key to the Tetrahedron Society. You're going to look for water in other solar systems, and you're going to solve Earth's pollution problems simultaneously. That's the key to this technology. That is the key to the technology. So it will be a brave new world. Built these dome cities, and uh, water's, water's the most precious thing out there when we find it. That's where we're going to get our energy. But there's something we must do before we go to Mars, before we travel the galaxy, before we build our rockets and do any of that, any of that stuff. There's something highly important that we must do with this advanced technology. Let me show you. It's crucial. 